I remember, I'm going to date myself. I remember when Kansas released the album Left Overture, and it had Carry On Wayward Son on it. And we used to listen to that on a loop. Only listening to that on a loop then meant an eight track or cassette tape, you know, no MP3. I bring it up because Saturday night, Kansas will be at Parks Casino. Friday night, Jay Leno. How about this? November 12th, J.B. Smoove, Leon Black, love him, in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Visit parkscasino.com. They've got it all going on. Tickets, details, all spelled out there. Got to be 21 or older. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. So I'm feeling prescient. Because for a long, long time, I said, keep your eye on the United States Senate race in Pennsylvania. It might all come down to Pennsylvania. And of course, as we are now less than four weeks away, everybody is saying Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. I said that at a time where I wasn't sure that it was going to be John Fetterman as the Democrat and Mehmet Oz as the Republican. Because if you listen to me on radio, you know that I believe the superior general election candidates were Dave McCormick, the Republican, and Connor Lamb, the Democrat. But Pennsylvania is one of nine states that has closed primaries. And consequently, uh, you know, this is who gets nominated. Fetterman, who has populist appeal nationwide, small donors, Bernie-like in terms of his appeal. And Oz, who was boosted, no doubt, by Donald Trump's endorsement at a time when that race was, was really a, a, a razor wire that separated them. So you know that John Fetterman suffered a stroke right before the primary election. I think it's pretty clear that he was not initially forthcoming about his underlying cardiomyopathy, his underlying health condition um, that probably uh, exacerbated the situation, had to have a defibrillator implanted. We wish him Godspeed, hope that he makes a full recovery. But now, you know, now here we are in, in early to mid-October. And it has presented a problem for Fetterman insofar as he's not been able to be out there in a robust session uh, on the campaign trail. And there's only one debate scheduled, October 25, the one and only debate and only for 60 minutes. I think Fetterman, because he's had a commanding lead, according to the polls up until now, uh, wanted to run out the clock. You know, a strategy not unlike the now president, President Biden, used against Donald Trump in the 2020 election when he really stayed as much as he could in, in Delaware, let Trump have the spotlight and, and just hope that all that early voting would put him over the top. And for Biden, it did. And no doubt Fetterman is hoping the same thing. I'm sure he also hoped that he could push the debate off and that he would be further recovered by the time that there would be a debate. Um, but it is what it is. And so now Fetterman has not done many media avails. He just gave an interview to NBC that I think they characterized as the first sit down, you know, interview that he's had with a, a journalist since suffering the uh, stroke. Um, there's huge interest as a result in seeing how he's able to put his thoughts together, seeing how he's able to process, think and communicate. Um, so naturally, you know, all eyes were on that NBC uh, interview that was done with Dasha Burns. And for the interview, John Fetterman required closed captioning, much like he's going to require in the debate against Dr. Oz, which means, and you really should watch it to see this, but the reporter is opposite Fetterman and she's posing questions. He's looking at a computer screen, much like I'm looking at right now. And her words are then typed up, and he's able to take a moment, read what is on the screen, and then respond to her question. Well, what was most interesting, and I think this is what caused the controversy, is that Dasha Burns, before tossing to the interview in her interaction with Lester Holt, said that Fetterman had struggled to understand her small talk before the interview began. And... Many are calling this, I, I had never heard the word ableism before, but they're saying, hey, it's unfair to him, it's unfair to anybody with a disability when you put him under this level of scrutiny. And among those who've, who've thrown a, you know, a flag on this is Kara Swisher from the New York Times, uh, who has hit podcasts, great uh, television guest, I had her on CNN not that long ago, um, saying that this is not fair to Fetterman and that NBC was over the line. 
look, this is a new one. I mean, where is the line? Where is the line of appropriate inquiry? I said on radio that I sense a degree of tribalism relative to Fetterman, where people are suiting up in their usual partisan jerseys with an eye toward how they want this Senate race to turn out. Because remember, the incumbent is Pat Toomey, and he is an R. So if Fetterman can pick up the seat, it's a gain for the Ds. It's not a hold. It's a gain. And I think there's a tendency in this race as in other races, to kind of put aside issues that are worthy of some discussion and analysis and instead look at who the opponent is and look at the bigger prize. And I said, for that reason, I put this in a category like Georgia, where I'm not equating Herschel Walker potentially lying about paying for an abortion with a a poor guy who gets a stroke, but the evangelicals in Georgia Uh, who profess such a a, a staunch belief in pro-life seemingly are looking the other way when there's evidence that Herschel Walker paid for a woman to have an abortion in 2009. And in similar fashion, I sense from a lot of my callers that, you know, they don't don't want to hear about Fetterman and his cognitive abilities because, frankly, the bigger prize is getting a seat that is currently held by the R's. Well, uh, apparently I'm in good company in at least thinking about Georgia and thinking about Pennsylvania in the same paragraph, because MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell, for whom I have the utmost respect, uh, today on MSNBC said she wanted to play devil's advocate, talking about the same race, Fetterman and Oz. Terry McAuliffe, the former Virginia governor, was her guest in this instance. And Mitchell compared the situation during this discussion, compared Georgia and Pennsylvania with McAuliffe. McAuliffe argued that the upcoming elections are the most crucial he's seen and Democrats must maintain control of Congress. So then Andrea Mitchell said this, and I'm I'm reading her quote, let me ask you this, to play devil's advocate, how is your argument that the bigger issue is keeping control of the Senate? How is that different from Republicans in Georgia saying, well, the issue is we have to keep control of the Senate against what they view as a Democratic radical agenda? Here's the question that I think it frames. Should the coverage be guided more by empathy or objectivity? I mean, both, obviously, right? You want want to cover this in a way that is empathetic to John Fetterman. We really do wish him well, want him to be healthy, whether he's the senator or not. But I don't think you surrender your your objectivity if you're in the media. I, I think we need to know the extent of his abilities. His lack of forthcoming initially, because there was there was like a two-day time period, and it was the final weekend of the campaign. When people say, oh, it was only two days, it was the final weekend of the campaign, and then they didn't release the medical records, and they haven't made the physician available. So I think those factors put Fetterman in this awkward position. His lack of forthcoming, I think, is what has driven up the interest in there. If he has no cognitive impairment, if he's just has a, a problem in communicating sentences, then I don't think it's an issue. Pat Toomey, the incumbent, did say that he thought it requires, if you're going to be an effective senator, to be, I'm paraphrasing, but be good on your feet and be able to be an advocate for that which is best for, in this case, the Commonwealth of, of Pennsylvania. Um, so there is that argument that actually it, it does matter. I mean, how will he communicate on the floor if necessary? Uh, there's only one thing I'm sure of in this instance. And I have to say a lot of radio callers today really took umbrage at the scrutiny being applied to Fetterman. Uh, and so if they speak for you know the majority, then, then maybe this whole issue is going to end up being to, to Fetterman's electoral benefit. The one thing that I'm sure of, and that is we'd all benefit from more debates. It's such a shame that it's going to come down to October 25th for 60 minutes Uh, There ought to be three debates, and they ought to be in different parts of the state, in the southeast, in central Pennsylvania, and in the Pittsburgh media market. And as a Pennsylvanian, I feel like we are being denied that in this cycle. The most important cycle, I know this gets said all the time, but relative to Senate races, to Senate races, the most important cycle that, that I can recall, and I've been paying attention since 1980. So objectivity, empathy. Both is the answer. Both is the answer, but not one without the other. 
right? Not just objectivity, not just empathy, empathy and objectivity. That's the way this issue ought to be discussed and analyzed. Thank you for hearing me out.